Hi, thanks for watching this video. I'm going to uh, show you how to change the bearings on your mower deck. If your mower is getting louder and louder to the point where it's really annoying or maybe it's rumbling or grinding or really kind of squealing high squeal when you put it in gear, uh, it's most likely that your bearings are almost gone, they're dry of grease or else in some cases they've gone all together. The, uh, the bearings and the shaft, like say on your blade, the blade doesn't have to wobble for the bearings to be bad. It can still feel solid and still have bad bearings. So you can take the belt off, spin it by hand and listen and uh, it'll give you some idea. But when that thing revs up, you know, like, I don't know how many hundreds or of RPM it would, it'll be spinning. Uh, it And then under load and tightness of the belt, it really increases the noise. So. I'm going to show you how to do that because the bearings went on my deck and so I had to change them. You saw that I had my deck off and it was on a John Deere tractor but it won't matter for you because basically a deck is a deck is a deck and uh, you have a tower and you have blades and, and you have bearings. Some people uh, just go and buy the complete tower you can do that or else you can put the bearings in. Where I start is get the deck off and then clean it up, you know, scrape the grease off, blow some of the grass and all kind of debris off with an air hose and get it nice and clean. Next you want to take the belt off. This here is a uh, kind of a, a protector to keep the, the belt from popping off, a little bit of a guide or, or a setter for it. Just undo this number 10 bolt slide it out of the way and pop the belt off. I'm going to do a fairly good restoration on this mower deck and take care of it because the mower is 11 years old now. So I threw it upside down and I took my power washer and I'm, I'm cleaning it up really well getting rid of all the flakes of material that's hanging under there and uh, anything else that's loose and needs to come off. After I power washed it, let it dry a little bit, I brought it back over to the shed and I'm starting by taking off the top pulley. This here is the pulley that drives the blade. I have two blades because the size of the deck, you can have one or two or more. So these are the drive pulleys for the blades. I take a 7 8 nut on my deck and rattle it off with my electric wrench whatever you have if it wants to turn on you some people put a uh, I forget what you call it some kind of a, a, a tool in there to hold the hole so you can turn that you can also put your hand underneath and hold the blade with a pair of gloves on and uh, it'll come off that way as well once you get the nut off this here may be hard it can come off easy or it can stick. I don't know if the video is clear enough but there's a hectagon type slot and I just took a hammer and tapped it a couple of times, spun it and it popped right off. These are your other idlers and uh, you can change the bearings in them if you want. You'll notice here that uh, these strange looking things are bolts because I have done these bearings years ago and they were rivets and so I changed them into bolts. So you take off those pulleys and change the bearings in them as well. Underneath, of course, this is your blade and I'm using an air wrench to get the blade off. You can use whatever you have available for you. Once the blade came off, this now is the top and that shaft is what the blade attaches to and this is called the spindle or the tower. It's held on by four bolts on mine so just rattle those four bolts off and it's going to pop right out in your hands. And there it is right there. Pretty simple. Now I've taken mine over to a, t a press and I'm uh, going to press mine out but you, uh, you may not have a press or if you don't, you can use, I'm just trying to focus this in a little better, sorry about that. 
if you don't have a press to push this bolt out, the shaft, uh, you can use uh, put the nut on and give it some easy blows with the hammer and it will pop out as well. Once we press that out, here's the shaft. This is where the blade bolted onto. Gives you an idea of what you're doing, what you're looking at. This shaft will come out of here if, if need be, if you need to replace that. But you shouldn't damage that, that should be fine. And that's where it was sticking forth, right there. So your tower is still sitting back there. On top of the tower is this collar that just pops off and as soon as you pop it off you see your bearing. That's your top bearing. Turn it over. Now that your shaft is out and this is your bottom bearing. My camera, I accidentally turned the setting so that it went to black and white. And I never realized that until I came in here after the deck was finished. And so, uh, sorry about all the black and white pictures, but that's what happened. If this was in color, you'd see rust building up around here. A little bit of rust here, but that's just mainly beat up paint. Inside the tower, there's this spacer. It's a shim. And that fits over that shaft. And this is your bottom bearing. And of course, your top one would be here and there's a good thing you can use that for. It's easy to uh, drive out if you you know maybe tap the side of the tower or just rattle it by hand a bit and if you move that shim it will fall to the side and then it will give you something to put a pin in here and drive it out. So you need to push the bottom bearing out. Well how are you going to get it out? Move that shim until you can see it through the hole then just stick a bolt or whatever you can get, uh, you know, proper punch, and just tap on that with a hammer and you'll drive the bearing out the bottom or top. And here it is. Both bearings are driven out now and it's kind of dirty in there. Just clean that up. But that's your, that's your uh, tower now with no bearings or shaft. Take your old bearing to town. You can go to your John Deere dealer and get brand new John Deere bearings, always nice to do, or your supply store and they'll sell you the bearing you need. On the John Deere it's a 6203, on my 42 inch deck, on yours it can be different. Now to put the bearings back in, I've gone and bought new bearings now. I just tapped him a little bit with the hammer to get him in place. Then I took the old bearing and I put it on top and I gently hit the new bearing with the hammer and drive it in place. Top and bottom as well. And make sure you put that spacer in. What you want to watch for is that that bearing has a place that it rests on when it goes to the bottom. So make sure you drive that in until it becomes solid. And if you look at the amount of lip that you have showing on top of your bearing before you take it out, that'll help you. So I already looked at that, I already knew that it's not flush. The bearing sits in about an eighth of an inch on mine, top and bottom. So uh, have a look at that before you take yours apart. That's it. The bearings in the tower are changed and you're ready for the next thing. Uh, my deck was getting quite badly beat up and here you can see some undercoat. I'm just undercoating different places. That's um, primer etching, self etching primer. What that is is a primer that etches into rust and adheres, fights rust, and I put that on before I put some paint. You'll also want to sharpen your blades. If you remember in school or if they showed you how to draw a file, you file one direction. Long strokes, keep filing until you get a consistent edge all the way through and uh, the proper angle. So you might have to work at it a bit. 
you don't want to make that razor sharp you just want it to be you know so that you can feel an edge on it but if it's too sharp it'll just bend quickly if you hit any thing that's stronger than a dandelion so just uh, give it a nice clean edge make sure you go all the way through this is a mulcher blade turn it over do the other side I went and put bolts in this idler pulley so the first time I had it it was rivets so I took my drill and I drilled out all the rivets then I put a screwdriver in the side tapped it a couple times and this pops apart into two pieces and there's one bearing in there and you pull that bearing out put the new one in and I could have pop riveted new ones back in but I put bolts nuts and bolts and cinched it down so you may have to do that for yours or buy a new pulley with the bearing it will be a lot more money like these bearings are like around three dollars um, that's the only ones the supplier had so I don't expect them to last seven years like the John Deere ones but they will last probably four I took a needle and I put grease in them uh, and that way that helps the bearings to last a lot longer than even from factory I put it back on the deck ran the nut in that's a number 15 nut that's ready to go have my tower in it's bolted down with the four bolts things are coming along good next I put on the drive pulley for the blade and get it tight and then you cinch it down and I'll know what it, when it's in place because that nut will sit below the thread where it was before I took it apart and also I'll be able to tell by the feel as I drive it on with my air wrench I happen to have air if not your ratchet will just do great we're going along we got the top uh, painted up and primed and fixed up this is the bottom now I was really disappointed that I couldn't show you this in color because right in here this is starting to turn brown uh, this here is some of the old paint on it and it, you know so the deck is just starting to rust it wasn't in very much but it is starting to get a little rough looking so I want to fix that up there's you can see pieces in here if this is in color as I was saying there was rusted brown spots here and uh, of course the black and white doesn't show it here's what I used black asphalt undercoating you may find a better product I don't know this here protects against rust and chipping because it retains its elasticity so if a stone or something hits it it just doesn't get brittle and fall off like you can use rocker uh, guard you know like for on cars I've used that I just didn't have any left all I had was this asphalt undercoating so it's ideal for a lot of things and uh, I'm going to be spraying that in so here we go spraying a nice even amount through it just look how pretty that looks nice and clean nice and even not built up too high and uh, now that deck is going to keep from rusting for maybe till the next bearing see before I put the blade on and some of the other screws I put a anti-seize compound on the threads because the grass is often damp or wet when I cut it and even the juices from the grass stick and hang up things start to rust dirt builds up on it gravel sand so uh, I like to use an anti-seize material apply it on the threads and run it in and out a couple of times then tighten down your blade that was the you can see a little bit of the anti-seize oozing out there and those blades will not be seized when I go to take them off to sharpen them next year the blade is on the deck is primed the tower is in new bearings and I gave it a nice shot of paint and ran my belt see how this goes yours will go the same way if you don't pay attention before you take it off you can have uh, a hard couple minutes trying to figure out how 
your belt fit on your tractor. Very simple. I, um, you know, I fix this up for under twenty dollars. That includes the paint. The paint was, you know, just about fourteen dollars, and uh, the bearings. So I guess is more than twenty. I, but uh, twenty-five, thirty dollars. You've got a brand new deck, and it runs quiet, man. When you throw it in gear, you have to look if look down to see if it engaged. So I uh, hope this helps, and thanks for watching. Cheers.